Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Hi. Uh, the Anne Frank Project is at SUNY Buffalo State. We're a social justice initiative there. And this is the third year that we've been working at Lafayette. And we have an absolute blast. So we're working with Lafayette International as well. Um, but we've been with uh, these students, some of them for three years, and a few for two. And so we also have some newcomers, which is fantastic. And we use story building. So the process of actually creating stories on their feet and sharing stories for community building, conflict resolution, and identity exploration. Our director, Drew Kahn, is a professor in the theater department, and every time he's ever directed a play, he's had a social justice bee in his bonnet, as he likes to say, and this project has been going on since about 2009, and uh, for the past five or six years we've been in the school. So we really enjoy our work, we love working with you, and we're really excited to present this new story that we've been building for a number of months. Uh, I'm not gonna give too much away because I think the students will take some questions afterwards. So without further ado, let's see the show. Ichibaba the Crane. <laughs> She does not want the child to bring bad fortune to her family, so she makes a difficult decision. While her other children are off playing in the fields, she takes the cursed child to the edge of the cliff and throws him off the cliff wrapped in swaddling clothes. Nearby, the all-seeing eagle sits watching. She spreads her mighty wings of justice and dives off the cliff to save the baby, delivers him to a new family. They named the child Baru, Outsider. Fifteen years later, Baru's life is miserable. He feels like an outsider and his foster family treats him as such. They make him work harder in the fields than all the other children. He has to clean the house, wash all the clothes, is fed less, and sleeps on a bed of dirt and hay. His family forbids him to do the only thing that eases his suffering, whistling. Their culture considers whistling rude and believes that it awakens evil spirits.
Kawi in his room. He is frozen with fear. Kawi opens his huge mouth and says, You don't belong here. What do you mean? You don't belong here. Why are you here? You don't belong here. What do you want from me? Rah! It's been many years. How do you know my name? Come, it is time for us to find your destiny. Could you at least tell me your name? Harada, now let us go into our Odyssey. Trust him, I'm so hungry and so weak. Varun steps into the water with Timsa. Timsa shows him how to fish. He is patient, he is quiet, he is focused. Varun follows Timsa's directions, even though he's frightened to be next to Timsa. Varun overcomes his fear and catches many fish. Pariah and Varun stuff themselves and fall asleep on an old log that happens to be the home of Husto the Cobra. Baroon, wake up! Wake up! Baroon is fast asleep and does not hear Baraya's call for help. Take care. 